E ngā mana, e ngā reo, rau ranga tirama, tēnā koutou, tēnā koutou, tēnā tātou katoa, uh, palo falava, malo e lele, uh, and warm greetings on this wonderful uh, Manu Rua night. Uh, I'd like to acknowledge Carl and the team here at Roundale for hosting, and also for uh, NZDI um, to provide an opportunity for us to discuss uh, the very serious topic of education uh, and some of the circumstances that our families are living with it within the electorate of Manurewa. Um, I'd like to acknowledge um, my fellow panellists tonight, and really my job is to outline Labor's education policy. Um, our education policy uh, puts teachers at the heart. So to begin, I want to say to Linda uh, and to um, NZDI that we will honour uh, a living wage. It's one of the commitments that we've made. Uh, it's relevant because in this sector there are, there are a number of um, our teacher aides particularly who don't earn a living wage, um, but there's 300,000 workers in our, in our country who are earning minimum wage. And so we've made some immediate commitments obviously by Christmas to put the minimum wage up to $15 an hour, uh, by April next year $16.25. That translates to $4,000 more uh, into those who are on the minimum wage. Um, yeah, I think that's um, something that we should be proud of. Uh, but within the education space, uh, what we want to do is to support schools, principals and teachers who are doing a fantastic job here in our electorate. So what we know from our ERO statistics is that actually Manurewa schools are doing incredibly well. 37.5% um, of our schools actually are on the longest time frame uh, for ERO review, that's four to five years which is fantastic. 62.5% are on the three years. So what that says to me is that our schools actually are performing incredibly well. So we're well governed, uh, we're connected with our community, so parents are engaged. Uh, but the biggest challenge that we have, I believe, in our electorate is that um, a number of our families are living in circumstances that affect their educational uh, achievement because of insecure housing, for example. So CPEG put out a, a report a couple of months ago that highlighted in our electorate we have as high as 60% transient rates in our, our schools. What does that mean? It means kids aren't uh, actually growing up in a home for life. Uh, there's insecure uh, tenancy, there's a lot of movement, and we know every time a child moves, essentially they regress about 10 weeks. Um, the other critical thing we know about our electorate is we only have 34% early childhood education provision. And so for a number of our uh, schools, kids are coming in as five and six year olds, and in fact they're already 18 months behind in terms of the national standard framework, which I think is um, worse than a crude tool, because what that tries to say is that the schools, our principals, our teachers are underperforming, and that's wrong. And that's, I think, the just a position between um, having national standards, which is supposed to be a measurement of school success, versus our ERO report, which says that our schools are performing incredibly well. So a lot of those social determinants that we're having to um, mitigate means that all of our schools in some way or another have um, food in schools programs. Uh, we are preoccupied with those sorts of issues because unless our kids are in a space to learn, if they've got rumbly tummies for example, uh, then they can't actually take the opportunities that I believe uh, you as a sector are providing. So I want to commend the work that you do um, and I'm happy to talk more specifically uh, about our policy, but um, I believe that uh, the poverty problem here in Manurewa is actually the biggest determinant of educational success for our children. Kia ora.